Welcome to our channel. My name is Fono Bongudasen. We are always happy to have you around. Thank you for always coming around. God bless you. Last week we discussed a very interesting topic, dress code and lifestyle. You know, that topic is very, very sensitive. Many people have different views and different understanding of dress code and lifestyle. Some people will say that God does not look at the way you dress, rather he looks at your heart. And, but the Bible says, out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speak it. So your behavior is actually from your inside. So if God is looking at the inside, it is the manifestation of the inside that is what you manifest in the outside. So it is safe to say that if your inside is rotten, your outside will be rotten. So if you ask me, I will summarize the last week topic to be modesty in lifestyle so dress code and lifestyle could be saved you can actually put it to be modesty in lifestyle now permit me to recommend this i call it safe mirror now finally it is safe to say ask yourself after you dress or anyhow you want to dress then the question is does this glorify god nobody is going to judge you nobody is judging you anyhow you want to dress please dress but now ask yourself, does this glorify God? God only fights battles for those who love him. He fights battles for those who glorify him, those who place him. I know God will fight your battles in the name of Jesus. Hello. Welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode you'll be notified thank you god bless you that takes us to the topic of today victorious christian living you see there's a synergy between last week's topic and today's topic so when you please god in your dressing god will fight your battles victorious christian living so let's pray Father, please give me the grace. Help me in all my ways. Please you that you may fight my battles. Let my life bring glory to your name. Let my life bring honor to your name. Let my life radiate you that you may fight my battles in the name of Jesus. Thank you because I know victory is mine. For this is settled in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Our memory verse is taken from Romans 8 verse 7 Romans 8 verse 7 and it says because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can it be you see carnal mind a person who dress shabbily dress anyhow is actually a carnal minded person that carnal minded person manifesting is an enmity is an enemy of God and can never please God NIV will put it, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, 
Now, can you do so? So, a carnal mind, a mind of flesh, is hostile to God. Our Bible text is taken from 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, from verse 7 to 8. And it reads, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all to, to those who love his appearing. It's not just for one person, to everyone who love his appearing. Now, if you look at that text, that a Bible text, there are some lessons inherent in them. Now, to gain victory and sustain it, you need to fight. To gain victory and sustain, you need to fight. I fought a good fight of faith. So another point is there is a virtue required in winning a race. That is faith in God. To every victory assess, there is a reward to be obtained. For every good behavior, for every victory obtained, for every good thing done, there is a reward. Now, every believer is guaranteed a reward. That is what we can actually get from that Bible text. Now, in our introduction, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight this Philistine. I suppose you know who said this and the scenario. When Goliath was uh, tormenting and threatening Israel, Israelites, then everybody, the soldiers, they were away, they were afraid for many days. When David got whims of it, he went to the king. Saul was actually the king then. He told him, don't disturb yourself. You can see this in 1 Samuel 17, 32. He told him, don't disturb yourself. That man, I'm going to kill him. And if you read, in fact, to read that uh, 1 Samuel, the stories of that David, at a point he was told to wear armors to protect himself. He said, no, if I wear this, you will kill me. He said, put this down. He said, how oh, about others? I said, no, I don't need anything. You know, the, the thrilling part of that story is when David confessed. He said, he said, are you not going with it? He said, don't worry. I will kill him with his sword. And you know, at the end of the day, it was the Goliath's sword that David used and cut his head off. So he was not just, just making a, a, an empty boast. He boasted in the Lord God of Israel. Because he knew the God he was serving. That is faith in God. So that story is very, very thrilling. And of course, it's so lifting. And in fact, it is faith boosting. When I read those stories and read that story, it is actually so, so soothing. What God can do when you confess it and it came to pass. Now to be victorious means having a mindset of winning, no matter the opposition. Exactly what David did. He did not look at him. He said, no, don't, he told the king, don't trouble yourself. That man is actually a dead meat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So every believer has been granted victory on Calvary Cross by Jesus. Every believer has been granted that. So now if you look at um, John, John 19.30, and it says, So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So if Jesus could say it is finished, which means everything was settled. So no matter the evil, evil tricks, enchantment, vitriol state, anyhow they want to come. Of course, you can see that in Numbers 23, verse 23. The Bible says, for there is no enchantment or omen against Jacob, nor is there any divination against Israel. At the proper time it shall be said to Jacob, and to Israel, what has God done? So it is a stone deal. It's a done deal that no matter problem, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God, but God, it's not your power. No, no. You know, as Paul will say, it's not by works, let any man boast. It is a grace of God. So this is the God's battle. This is the Lord's battle, not your battle. So to be victorious means to overcome or win opposition, even difficulties. You bring giants down as David did. You could divide the Red Sea as God did through Moses. So those are the ways 
you can actually get it done okay now we have two lesson outline body number one says virtue for virtuous living virtues there are some things you need to exhibit to have this victorious living living a virtuous christian lifestyle should be it is for every believer it is every believer ultimate goal you know victorious life is actually to me it is very key for a christian to be victorious because that is when you can actually know in fact that is when your enemies even the people in the dark world can actually know that you are indeed a child of god because you live a life of victory where others are failing you are succeeding where they put limitations you are breaking boundaries before time nobody could divide the red sea but god divided the race for Israelite. that is a virtuous life wall of jericho was so fortified you read that story <laughs> it was so fortified but god did impossible so those are the things that a christian should actually do so now what are the virtues let's look at them one by one one of the virtues is faith in god faith in god if you look at hebrews 11 verse 6 he said without faith you cannot even please god without faith you cannot please god and you know when you believe him you have faith in you believe that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him he reward those who seek him diligently if you look at uh, that samuel david david believed god so much that's first samuel 17 32 he told Saul, so don't worry yourself that man is a dead mate and of course he became that dead mate now another point is align with god's word Say faith coming by hearing, hearing what the word of God. And that same faith comes by hearing. If you hear the word of the devil, you start believing the devil. So align with the word of God. If you look at Psalms 107 verse 20, he said, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all destructions. His words are so powerful that he can destroy everything. He can even reverse destruction. He sent his word to heal them and deliver them from all destructions. So align with what God's word, what he said it will be, just claim it. No, the truth is this. Everything given is not for free. You have to demand for it. So when you align with the word of God, there are promises that are there in the word of God. You claim them. Start acting them. You know, if a will is written for a person, maybe like they write a will, it's okay, when my child is 18, he can actually come and claim it. When a child is 18 and the child is not asking for that will to be uh, um, executed, that will remain a will. So the, something needs to be demanded even when it is given. So we have been given victory. We have to demand that victory. Another point is to speak faith-based works. You know your father. See David, he said, don't worry. <laughs> he said, that was a concise Philistine. I'm going to kill him. He knew. So... In Zechariah 4, verse 6, it says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. So when you know that it's only God that fights your battle, he will give you victory. But when you try to do it on your own by your power, it becomes difficult. Very, very difficult. You know, there's this um, thing that we have to understand. If you like, actually look at the way Christians of yesterday years live their lives and the way we Christians of today do. Imagine buying a toy for your child. A toy for your child. So your child now will be the one inquisitive children break the toys and scatter the toy. Now, like if you look at the Christian of the old, they will pack the toys and take it back to God. Say, ah, daddy, I spoiled the toy. Help me fix the toy. He's there and ready and willing to fix the toy. But of, of us today, when we destroy the toy, we will try to try to fix it by ourselves. We will try to help God to fix it. Things that we should take to God. He say, come to me, all that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Then you'll be telling God, no, I'm not laden. I'm not having, no, no, no problem. I'll take care of myself. So you have to trust in God. Let it be said, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. So you have to solely trust in the Lord for all your needs. For you to have victory in all ramification of your life just look at what moses said to israelites it's very exciting i remember this many years ago when i was troubled and god just showed me this particular portion of the bible it was comforting me 
Exodus 14, 14. But let's start with from, from the 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall see them no more. And the 14, the best part of it, the Lord will fight for you, you shall hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you, you shall hold your peace. Many years ago, it was a comforting word that God revealed to me. And then I started finding peace. So another point is, be focused in victory, never be distracted. Be focused in victory, never be distracted. Let's see what 2 Samuel 11 verse 1 says. He said, it happened in the spring of the year, at the time when king goes out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rahab. But David remained at Jerusalem. He was calm, strategic. He handed everything to God. You know, David has been this person that always inquire of the Lord, what should we do? How do we go about this? And God, of course, is faithful. He will tell you what to do, how to get it sorted. So don't always try to do it by yourself. Allow God to do it for you. Another point is to deal with your weakness and work on your strength. Now, this is the story of Joshua. When a small place conquered them and Joshua was troubled. God, you said you will fight my battle. You not allow me. You look at Joshua 1. Read that first chapter. The way God was promised. He said, as I was with your master, I will not leave you. No nation will be able to stand before you. He said, any way you step your feet upon, I will hand over unto you for possession. But then a small city came and was conquering Israel. And if Joshua was there, he was actually troubled. God, what is happening? And God responded. If you look at the story. But let's just read Joshua 7, 20 and 21. And I can answer Joshua and say, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoil a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wage of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. And they, they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with silent silver under it. You know, if you, as a child of God, for you to have victory is for you to deal with your weaknesses. You know. That you cannot, you know, Paul, Paul Apostle will say, even in my weakness, that is when the strength is made manifest. You will tell God, oh, I know, I cannot do this. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then let God be the one at the front. Not you trying to manifest your own strength. Allow God's strength to be. So when you notice your weakness, confess it. Allow God to deal with your weaknesses. Expose it. Stop hiding it. Not until that ab abomination was exposed, the Israelites were at danger. So when it was exposed, that was when the glory of God returned and victory became theirs. Another point is have productive time in God's presence and be holy. Have a productive time in God's presence and be holy. Let's look at Psalm 31 verse 15. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. So my times, allow God's, your time to be God's time. Let God's time be your own time. Hand over everything unto him. Don't try to help God. Don't try to do it by your power. No. Allow him to be the one to help you. Let's look at Hebrews 12 verse 14. And he says, Pursue peace with all men and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue peace with all people and with holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. So at all times, seek peace. Allow God to give you the peace that he has. He said, the peace I give you is not like the peace that the world gives. No, this is beyond what human could understand. Let the peace of God flow your heart. When you know you are weak or you discover some things, you, you actually, your weaknesses, hand over unto him. Once he steps in, the peace will flood your heart. Hello. Welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like subscribe and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode you'll be notified thank you god bless you so let's move to our second outline second outline says how to maintain a virtuous life you know before we look at the virtues now how to maintain virtuous life 
Number one point is guide your heart. You know, that is very key. It is in your heart that you get everything sorted. If you see weakness, it becomes weakness. If you see victory, it of course it becomes victory. So many people open door to trouble. They open door to trouble through what they hear, what they see. What they hear and what they see. What you hear determines what you will, of course, what you hear and see at the beginning determines the end of everything. You look at Proverbs 2, pro, rather Proverbs 4, 20, 20 to 22. Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 22. And it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Say, give attention to my word. So you have to pay attention. Let your ear hear what God says. Incline your ears to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Let your eyes see what God says. No. Don't be allowed to be distracted. Those are the only way you can actually maintain your victory. Another point says, keep your heart from evil influx. Keep your heart away from evil influx. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs issues of life. Your heart is the center where different things happen. Both evil thoughts and good thoughts are there. You know, that is the seat where the devil and God is fighting to possess. So it is for you now to yield to God, to allow God to dominate. That constant fight is always there, but it is where you yield to become a dominant. So keep your heart from all evil influx. Another point says your speech should be faith-based, not enticing words. Your speech should be faith-based, not enticing words. Now look at First uh, Corinthians two verse four, and it says, "And my speech and my preaching were not persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power." It is not just uh, um, motivational, but these are backed by action. Words of God, miracle wonders. That's what Paul is saying, he's saying there. I was not just using enticing words. I was not just telling them stories. I was not just trying to philosophize everything. No, I tell them things that were true and life. Let's look at uh, uh, Colossians 2 verse 4. And it says, Now, this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. There are people who are motivational speakers and they will use motivation to explain the word of God. No, you don't need to motivate anybody. No, the word of God is not for motivation. It's for transformation. It is the word of God when it comes into your life. The Bible says it transforms us. It brings life and light into us. Another point is work on what you see. Work on what you see. That is how to maintain this victorious life. Work on what you see. Look at First John 2, verse 15 to 17. I said, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, let the love of the Father, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes and the pride of life. is not of the Father, it is of the world. So work on what you see. Work on what you see. Don't allow what you see to influence you. Don't allow what you see to change your perspective, change your reasoning, change your love for God. Allow what you see to be a motivation, to put you on track, to put you on track. So spiritual awareness and alertness make a race flawless and fruitful. When you are spiritually alert, you make the race swift, fruitful, and uh, uh, lawless and flawless. So it is safe to conclude that to every victory desired to be won, there are serious purging required. <laughs> you, you should understand this. For a person to have a victory, you have a part to play. That is the conclusion. You have a part to play. So you need to yield to God. There are some things you need to drop. There are some things you actually need to drop so that God will take over and give you victory.
Thank you so much for always coming around to study with us. I always have this excitement in my heart. Each time we have this stuff done, and I know God will continue to bless you. God will continue to expose himself through his word to you. Your life will experience no limitations. You continue to live a virtuous life that he has been given to us on the cross of Calvary. Thank you. God bless you. See you in the next episode. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything. There's no one like you.